Born to Walk, the walking system begins talking about how walking while you have an injured arm might throw off the balance in the rest of your body. The body divides itself into two segments, passenger and locomotor, that the tissues are not always consciously directed, but sometimes operating off of their, the programming that they're receiving from the more proximal neurons and the general reaction of the fibrous web to the forces of momentum, which have been conditioned through this kind of quick reflex. So the impact of the foot on the ground send forces into the soft tissue along the channels determined by the joints. Kind of those return lines that we're talking about, how the force is going up particular channels. Uh, tibialis anterior, constantly adjusting the tension in response to surrounding events, reacting first to the eversion of the calcaneus and then to the ankle plantar flexion in that close kind of proximal neural circuitry which is almost subconscious go into our relationship with gravity like the natural attraction we have towards watching people move athletics and how minimizing the energy involved in gait is a key factor of human evolution the economy of movement which results from recycling this through the elasticity in our fashion Walking upright, it's one of the major factors. It's really the major factor defining, defining human beings. Creating a stable, resilient form with the least calorie usage has been a driving force within nature. When we talk about the relationship between form and function, that's what we're getting into right there. Creating a stable, resilient form which is able to solve for the problems of the environment in terms of how far they need to locomote or what chemistry needs to be produced. The different strategies we see from different animals, Homo sapiens gave up strength and speed, efficiency and generalization, minimizing calorie expenditure in search for food, maximizing the strategies we use to catch, find, grow food, and even the nutrients that we can get out of the food through things like uh, fermenting and even using fire. Made use of many of the factors inherent in our bodies, especially the potential that was unleashed when we became capable of standing, walking and running on two legs. Our efficiency is afforded by our upright posture, long limbs, and the interrelationship between joint ranges that interdependent tensegrity and the deviations between segments piling up on top of each other, resulting in a greater efficiency using less energy per unit. Heel striking on a straight leg, which only bends slightly, allows the skeletal system to manage much of the force. Deep reflection of running costs a lot more energy. And then go through a few different animals and how they solve the ungulates with the longer kind of tendons on their back leg kind of those four bar closed system then playing off the, the extension of the spine to act as levers through that right so the number of bends in the limbs and the the degree to which each bends in terms of how much are the front digits of the toe bending how much is the ankle bending how much is the knee bending how much is the hip flexing and how these things pile on top of each other Without the constant need for resistance of flexion, the human spinal erectors have a greatly reduced circumference compared to those of old world monkeys. We can also see how the transverse processes of the human spine are more posteriorly placed, allowing greater stability in extension, since they are behind the center of the intervertebral discs. The ilia and having that more lateral hollow on the ilia, more surface area there for muscular attachment, and creating those axial pillars, which we referred to kind of along the lateral lines, giving us that stability along our left side and right side vertically. It's important to remember that all of this is also dependent on the condition of the tissue itself. And that the, the passenger locomotor thing may come to apply if a particular area of tissue is restricted, um, which can happen for different reasons. The Achilles tendon, all-time favorite, um, referring to it as kind of spring mass system.
areas of connective tissue, tendons, aponeuroses, where there's an accumulation of collagen. Especially type 3, having the ability to lengthen under stress and to recoil in a manner similar to that of elastic bands and springs. The pace of the movement and the ability of the tissue to store up that energy may be different depending on the positions that we're able to achieve because of the surrounding tissue, which we can work with in something like myofascial release. And also because of the actual positions that we know how to get into that we have said, okay, here, I dig my foot here, boom. And okay, how many times have you practiced getting into that position? The tissues also develop around that.